Shadows of Doubt is immersive sim perfection. I am hyper addicted to this game. When I'm not playing it, I'm thinking about it. And when I play it, I forget that I'm a human and I need to eat. Or I will die. This is a game about solving murders and some other side detective work. And pretty soon a real life detective will solve the mystery of why I just died in front of my computer screen. Here's a hint for the detective. It will either be starvation or sleep deprivation. Because yeah, this game is also wreaking havoc on my sleep schedule. Premise. If you're familiar with the world of Blade Runner or Cyberpunk, then yeah, the world here is pretty much that. Mega corporations control everything, the world is extremely polluted, and the police do the bare minimum needed to earn a paycheck. And when I say police, I actually mean corporate enforcers. For a real life parallel to those, you should look at the Magic the Gathering Pinkertons. These guys don't give a shit about the regular people, and if they get murdered, they'd rather not have to deal with all the work required to solve it. That's where you come in. Gameplay. This is a detective game, which is why I'm currently lost inside a building's ventilation system. I completely forgot where I came in and I have no idea how I'm supposed to get out. The reason I went in here is because in order to enforce the law, I have to break the law. I am not an employee of the government, I'm more of a contractor who fills in these DMV style forms that the government then acts on. So when I want to solve a murder, I first have to break into the apartment where it happened, and get the fingerprints there and search the place to find identifications for the body and figure out where they work and find their password and read their email for clues and steal the money in the apartment. I mean, they won't be using it anymore, so it's better I take the money and use it to buy a shower for my depressing apartment. Then I go to their place of work and commit more breaking and entering. It's not as if the corpo enforcers particularly care, I've never suffered consequences for my actions. There will probably be a security system, but that can be easily turned off by lockpicking a breaker box and flipping a switch. And then pick the lock on the door, and if there is a person actually there, just beat them up and put them in handcuffs. Personal property and privacy mean nothing to the long arm of the law. And if the person in the building had a gun and shot you 20 times, don't worry. Just go to the closest venting machine and buy a bandage and you'll be right as rain. Now why did I go to their place of work? Because businesses keep files on their employees. And frequently those businesses have their fingerprints on file. And if you did a proper job of looking for fingerprints at the crime scene, you will probably find a match for the killer's fingerprints at the victim's place of work. If none of their co-workers' fingerprints match, then you might find a clue in an email. Like this one, where it said Violet is coming for you. And another email that said Violet frequents the Jade Dragon Bar or whatever. That doesn't matter, because you have a name. And names have a lot of power in the world of Shadows of Doubt. Because at City Hall, you can break into the enforcer's offices, get on the computer, search the government database with a name, and then print out almost all their information, including their fingerprints. Which is why everyone in this world is an asshole who refuses to tell you their name. And what do you know, the fingerprints are a match. Now we fill out the form. We have the killer's name, a fingerprint that places them at the crime scene, and where they live. Now we find the murder weapon and arrest them. To arrest them, we break into their business and sneak into the bathroom while they're pooping, sneak up behind them and cuff them before they even wash their hands. And when we search them, we might possibly find their murder weapon. If we don't, we have to break into their home, 
or bribe their significant other to let us take a look around. And it's right there on the kitchen counter. Arrest, check. Murder weapon, check. Now we just hand the form in and job well done. While we wait for another murder to happen, we can take side jobs, like performing an outsourced arrest where we have to figure out who we are arresting. And the process is similar to the murders, breaking into businesses and digging up information about a lot of people and then stealth handcuffing the suspect. You can also solve cases of theft or photograph people without their consent. There's also public humiliation, where you identify the perp and throw food in their face. But when you just want to relax, you can go home and buy furniture and redecorate and make a home for yourself. Or you can just break into other people's homes to take a shower. But I guess it's safer to sleep in your own house. So that is something you can sink your money into. Or you can sink money by buying upgrades in the form of sync discs, but most of my sync discs come from jobs. So your apartment is your main money sink. Immersive Sim So the murders, they aren't generated. This is a simulation, and they actually happen in real time. And that's why you can actually see the killer at the apartment if you get there fast enough. They haven't had time to get away yet. There is a great video by Kara Kyle called The Life and Death of Jane, where he shows a murder happening in the game. People go to work and go home, hang around in places and have relationships with each other. And it's all procedurally generated, which is perfect for a game like this. Because it should be unique to you. You can't just Google for a key code or who the murderer is. You have to solve it yourself. And there was a moment where I would have Googled the answer. The killer gave me his name as a clue, but it was an anagram for his name. What stopped me at first was that it was a dash, a period, and then several more dashes, and the amount of letters didn't line up with the dashes plus the period. And after an hour, I finally figured out, oh, the period is just a period, and the first dash is their initial, just like in the city directory. And I found the killer literally on the first page of the city directory. But because everything is mostly generated, it can be generated wrong, or in a dumb way. For example, I have an arrest job to find the perp that lives in a building with like 18 floors. And all I know is that they live there and are 44 years old with long black hair. Now I can look for a file cabinet that has a bunch of resident info, but it's not guaranteed that I will find the person I'm looking for. And my other option is just to talk to all the residents, which is a long and tedious process. And since the ventilation system is procedurally generated, its path barely makes sense and it just goes wherever. But I would say far more stuff here works than doesn't work. Problems. There is a physics system here and it's not very good. More often than not, when I try to move objects around, it will end up shooting just somewhere. Like this one time where I tried to jump on a trash can or something and it ended up flying through a window. The physics need work. Objects seem to take just a little nudge to then shoot into the moon. The performance is not great as my play sessions get longer, the frame rate gets lower. It might be my aggressive alt tapping, but in my opinion that's not an excuse. And it just sucks to see the game at 15 frames per second. And actually, it doesn't seem to be tied to play session length, as I restarted my game and the frame rate was still low. It was snowing in the game, and that is probably the reason the frame rate is so low. And changing graphics settings made no difference. And when it isn't snowing, my frame rate hovers around 45, so there is some optimization required here. There's only one problem I have with the actual gameplay. 
and that's fingerprints. I'm starting to feel like a killer's fingerprints will always be the main source of evidence that I catch the killer with. I don't want them to remove fingerprints, I want them to add more DNA data, like scanning for saliva, blood, or even cum. Like I could look over the cadaver and find blood and flesh particles or whatever on their fingernails. And then I could find the killer through both DNA sampling and seeing scratches on the killer's face or something. That is what I hope to see in the future of this game. It is early access and I have full faith that these issues will be resolved with time. I guess another problem I could have is that if you have a long playthrough, then eventually your character would just know everything. The character would know that these fingerprints match this guy, and all the passcodes to all the computers. And that could be solved by making you actually keep files on people in your house. But then again, as long as you have a name, you can always go down to the city and print their file. Which pretty much has everything important except where they work and their passcode. But hey, you can always start a new world and an eventual solved world is appealing to me. Conclusion. This is why I love indie games. It's the creativity and the awesome tech experimentation like this. Seriously, they generate a whole town for you to investigate crimes in. It's so cool. This is probably the best immersive sim I have played, and certainly the best detective game I've played. Eat your heart out, L.A. Noir. I heavily recommend this game, with a warning. You might become very addicted to the game. I mean, I saw the game and thought, nah, it's not my can of soup. And then I heard some ordinary gamers Mudahar talk about it, and I thought, alright, I'll give it a shot. Took into my wishlist, bought it, and here we are now, with the game living rent-free in my head. I even want to make another video about it where I just do a case and actually edit it. Since that kind of content about this game seems hard to find. I just love walking up to people and asking their name while actually knowing their name, where they work, where they live, who their significant other is, what their hobby is, their fingerprint type, their password, their embarrassing dating emails, where they were last night, and what they like to eat. Good thing this stuff is hard to find in the real world. I give the game a Facebook out of Instagram. It's an awesome game, and I can't wait to play it again once I get out of this vent. Subscribe, call me Uncle Brian, and have an amazing day.